guys, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed making your last two crafts. And now we're getting ready to do probably what everyone's favorite is, and that is the oh so fun little truck here. So <clears throat> this truck has a lot of little pieces to it. I'm gonna walk you through step by step. Um, and how I think would be the best way for us to uh, make it. I am back and forth still on whether you guys are going to receive your um, wheels attached or unattached. And we're still trying to decide that only because this is our prototype here. Well, one of our many. <laughs> um, and so tonight I actually agreed that I would try to hammer in the um the nails and put the wheels on myself and see how it goes just kind of as a trial because I have a yet to have a chance to try that on my own because this is the next one off the assembly line so um he's definitely we've been working on these trucks for a really long time I have been for over a year trying to figure out how to make this happen and now they're finally here I'm really excited now we are going to have a chance to make them. And go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I am actually going to do is I'm gonna paint my truck so that I have enough time for the truck itself to, um, to dry while I move on to the other projects because the truck definitely has a couple other pieces to it. You will be receiving your stencil here. And I'm actually going to cut the America off the bottom. And I will try to show you in just a second. But there is there are little window pieces here, and we are going to put them on the truck and I am going to put it over the bare wood. And I'm totally okay with that because that is um, basically just gonna build that barrier for us. It, it'll be easier for us to kind of cover the natural wood with the white. I'm choosing to do my truck with white windows versus um, doing, oh, Mr. Mosquito, you go away. Um, <clears throat> versus doing, um, painting the entire truck the blue and then painting over the blue with the white. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to be just peachy keen here. So I'm just adding my windows on. The other thing that it has is a little, um, a little door handle. I will pull them off. I'm going to put those on as well, and I'll show you up front and personal in just a second. Actually, before I, no, it's okay. They are just little um, rounded rectangles here. You can absolutely use your washi tape. You will have washi, washi tape. You will have your transfer tape on top of it. So these are just the little door handles here. Okay, so I am just putting them um, on the truck, and I'll show you putting everything right there. Okay. There's no wrong or right um, with it. So if you choose to keep your, um, your stencils all together in one, you can definitely do that. And then you can just peel it off like we did the USA and take that center piece there. Um, oops, I had already flipped it. Flipped it around to the other side. And I'm just eyeballing it. It's definitely not gonna be perfect from one side to the other. But guys, I don't mind that. I like that it's not perfect. I like for things to be sometimes, in some cases like this, for it to be just a hair not perfect. and it's just moved on me. So it might just be easier to put it on as a sticker. Oh, come on you.
I don't want to be straight. Okay. I think we're pretty straight there. We're good. All right. So we're going to put this to the side. And I feel like there's now a mosquito on me. You know how that is? You just like have the heebie jeebies. Um, okay. So you do receive your paintbrush in your kit. And you will just go ahead and want to like brush the paint on. And this is one of those colors for me that probably will take a couple coats. And that's okay. And I already know that. And um, it could even bleed underneath the window and um, the door handle. But we're okay with that because we're gonna paint that over top anyways. I'm just trying to like save myself a little bit of time in the future with having to completely repaint over top of it. All right, so. All right, we're going to go. So I painted the one side. We're going to go up and over the top and I did paint the bed of the truck only you don't really need to. It's completely preference as far as what you want to do with it. Um, the like the bed, the wooden part of the bed that's going to sit on top of it, it does just sit on top of it. So if you feel like you don't want to paint it or don't feel like you need to paint it, then don't paint it. It's completely up to you on that. And if you guys choose to do a different color, um, I cannot wait to see the color that you choose. That was actually one of the things that I really struggled with um, over time was just what color to paint it that paint this truck that I could actually really see that I could have it kind of a year round thing. Um, like from here, we're going to go through summer and then eventually it'll be fall again and we'll do all this all over again. But I wanted a color that I felt like would kind of go with everything because I feel like green for Christmas, um, red. I didn't want to do red because I felt like we, well, I'm not a huge fan of red in my house for home decor personally. Um, I used to be kind of uh, switched all that out and don't really have a lot of red left, but if any at all. <clears throat> but as you guys know, I love the turquoise. I love the mints. I love the blues. I, I definitely gravitate towards those colors more. And so I felt like I wanted this truck. Originally, actually, I was going to paint it white because I felt like white would kind of go with um, pumpkins or apples or um, a lot of other colors that I felt like would really um, go well together. And I um went ahead and, and did this blue color and I really love the way that it turned out because I feel like this with orange will be so pretty in the fall. Um, I also think that red at Christmas time, because although I don't like red, it's a little accent color, not the main color for me. Um, and gold would be good. White will be good. Black will be good. So, um, I don't know, I just kind of felt like this was a good color after giving it a lot of thought, like for a year. <laughs> so, giving this guy enough color and paint. And there we go. Almost there. I did not do the underside of the truck. I didn't really feel like that was necessary. Because it's really not going to show. I did go underneath back here. And these brushes sometimes do give a lot of like a little of a stroke and I'm not always going for a stroke, brush stroke. So 
So don't be afraid to just kind of like take your finger over top and just smooth. It'll give you just a smoother look. Not to the point that you're taking the paint off, but just to smooth a little bit of the brush strokes out. Somebody in my house is still awake. I thought it was just me. Hmm. Hopefully it's Freddie and not one of the boys, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. <laughs> All right, so. Like I said, I have a feeling um, this is gonna take two coats, so not gonna totally worry about it right this second so all right so I'm going to put this to the side for a few and I'm rinsing out the brush and drying it a little bit as well not have to be dried, it doesn't have to be dried all the way if we're doing um, a chalk paint. Now I'm grabbing the wheels, hoils, and um, we're gonna paint these puppies if I can keep my fingers on them. And I chose to do mine a gray. And I get a little messy with this project. So basically you're going to paint all the way around the front, pick a side, any side, which one you want to do. And you're going to lay it down just for a bit. You're going to like where your fingers are grabbing. You're not gonna be able to get under that at the moment while it's still drying. So just go ahead and don't worry about it right this second. We'll be there soon enough. <clears throat> you can absolutely do this part with your sponge. Um, I do have my sponge here on standby if needed. And oddly enough, I kind of find by the end of the day, I kind of like use my brush a little bit more versus my sponge. But um, the reason for me personally is that I'm starting to kind of really be aware or hyper aware of how I'm holding things and trying to do my best to prolong any form of like careful tunnel or anything like that because I am constantly painting all day and um, I seem to grip much more onto a sponge than I do a paintbrush. So I am working on being very aware of that. So this paint that I'm using is also the chalk paint. I'm using chalk paint for this entire project. And the cool part about it is like my wheels are dry. It just dries so quickly. So chalk paint is really good if you're impatient like me. <laughs> Not even that, but it just dries so fast. It doesn't have a lot, like you won't see like brush strokes or anything like that because it's just a matte, matte color. Okay, so the chalk, however, is not 100% dry. The next thing that I am gonna recommend that we do is we grab the bed of the truck. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of inside scoop here and in how things work. This is a prototype. This is absolutely not the finished product here. And just to give you a little bit of inside scoop information, this was made by me. Um, this was made by my husband and uh, there is a huge difference, friends. Brian, Freddie, you want Freddie's. And so basically he's been gone a lot lately and um, not working, but elsewhere. And so 
Um, I've been having to do a lot of the building part on my own and basically I can come up with a prototype and then he fixes it to make it look good. So I am showing you this. I went ahead and I weeded the America. I just felt like it was going to be a little bit easier for me to see for this exact project because of the prototype I was trying to make the stencil large enough that you could still see America but not so big that it wouldn't fit on the truck. So I have many different size Americas around here. Um, the other thing that I'm going to just put this thought into your brain because we are keeping the trucks for a while. Not only do you wanna make sure that you choose a color that is gonna carry you through at least through the end of, you know, the rest of the year as far as seasons go, but I am planning on giving you guys items that you can put in the back of your truck. So if you don't want it to say America, use the stencil for something else and um, don't put it on. I guess that's my thought on that because like next month we are gonna, we will be doing a beachy theme and they will have a beach type item to put back there. So. Originally, originally, I was thinking we would have a different stencil and just give you a back of a truck, but these are so tedious and time consuming to make. I don't think I'm going to win on that. So I'm preparing myself not to win. And um, I got to find my blue paint. I know it's in here somewhere. I know I'm crazy. I've got different colors of paint going on here. A little crazy. So somewhere in here is a navy blue. There's my red. Where'd it go? Yeah, it's definitely the right one. I'm a little nutty because I have a couple. All right. Here it is. All right, so with this, I am going to use the sponge and we're just going to a little, 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 little dabble do yet. And I'm just gonna kind of like push some of the excess off of the sponge because I really need to make sure that there is not too much on here because there's no way for us to, to kind of like base coat the stencil in a way, meaning that although we didn't do this on our last project, um, if most likely what I would be doing is I would be, um, if I had painted the bed of the truck, I would then go over it that same color with the stencil. Now it worked really well with the USA last time, but because this is also raw wood, there's no need to base coat. You can't even begin to try to base coat it. So we're just gonna do our best, but we don't wanna use it a lot of paint because the more paint we, we use with not base coating it um, on top of, like base coating the stencil on top of the base coat paint, um, the more we have to worry about, I just had some paint on there, the more we have to worry about it bleeding. So I'm going to take it off and voila, marca. There we go. I'm gonna let it dry for just a few and then I will pull out the inside of the A's, but it looks really good, nice and clear. <clears throat> All right, so I think I can definitely do another coat of my blue. And just think of these as like your little holding spot, the wheel areas, right? Ooh, I think I have some. Gray, hold up for a second. Somewhere along the lines, I got into the gray accidentally. All right, let's try that. All right better. We have our light blue. Ooh, 
probably could have gotten away with one coat, but two coats is definitely going to seal it, seal the deal, man. Worth it for sure. All right, so we have side one done. Two. Getting there. The other thing that I might rec that I am recommending at this point is if you do not have or if you are going to use a hot glue gun, this would be a really good time to plug it in because we are going to get ready to use that in just a few moments. The other product that I would recommend you guys grabbing is Mod Podge, if you have that. Um, that is a personal preference thing as far as if you do use the Mod Podge in just a couple of minutes. But you probably could get away with like a clear, a, a glue that is going to end up drying clear that is easy to work with. Um, and I'll show you why in just a moment, uno momento. So, here we go. All right, so we're gonna let that dry because we have more to do on this puppy. Set that aside. I'm gonna clean my brush. And I'm just cleaning my brush with water. So just a little bit of water in a cup. <clears throat> Going to grab um, a little bit of paint here to fill those spots that we kind of left before. All right, that part is done. All right, so now we're going to grab our three firecrackers. So you have three different sizes here. I so love the way this turned out. I hope you guys do too. So on a white paper is basically the backing of a stencil. You are going to have washi tape, which is this fun little cute tape, and you probably have seen it in the store. Maybe didn't know what it was or what it was called, but this is just a way that I thought would be a good way to use it. I have so many different rolls of this stuff, and um, I'm hoping that I um, I have, a, I just have a lot of different like options, but yeah, I am hoping that I have enough of each option to be able to use for everybody um, the same, but if not, it'll be a little bit different and that'll be perfectly fine. It'll all work out and it'll definitely, I think we'll like the look of it. So, um, and everybody is just a hair different. So all I'm doing is I'm literally just rolling the washi tape on top of the dowel. And we're gonna set it aside. If it's a little long on any of the sides, it's okay. We're going to do, so the blue with the stars is going to be kind of that medium size, middle size dowel firecracker, excuse me. Get it light right, get it right lady. Um, there we go, rolling it around and covering it up. Now I could have Mod Podge paper on here, but it would have taken a lot longer and it would have been tedious and it would have just taken, it would have been a little bit, um, more 
just work. So let's go for simple, right? Plus I had this washi tape here. So I felt like it, it made sense to use something that I didn't have to go out and buy more of. But every roll that I have is different and I have one of each roll. So it could be that we end up needing to have something just a hair different and I don't think that'll be a problem. Be perfect. And then not everybody is quite the same. All right, so we have all the washi tape. So what I'm gonna do now is trim the top. There we go. And we're just, like I said, just trimming the top. You're going to notice that one side of your firecracker has a little pre-drilled hole for you. Uh, and that will be for your little, like the fire, the wick part to go into. And that will be like a twine. Come on, you. So I'm just kind of spinning it around and making sure that I have it all trimmed up. It looks nice and finished. All right. So our three are finished. All right, there we go. I'm gonna set these aside just for a moment because it is, I am still, I wanna make sure that these are, are drying over here. My truck is still a little wet. All right, come on, mister, you need to dry. Okay, so we'll keep him going. Um, but I think the next thing that we're going to do, I know we're kind of jumping back and forth and you do what's best for you. Um, obviously if you're working on your own, you can just watch the different steps and know all that needs to get done. And the reason why I'm kind of bouncing around. It's just to keep the speed of everything going for us on here so it's not like a three hour thing because it really doesn't need to be, but where? Truck pieces, where are you? Here we are. All right, so that's why I put the America on the wrong back. So basically with this, there's a couple, excuse me, a couple different things that <coughs> we can do. <coughs> um, I am just peeling this piece off. in my throat and um, I'm going to find the center ish of our wheel and I am going to paint this puppy white And 
Two more to go. Once again, they do not have to be perfect. Even if you're a perfectionist, I get it. But this is kind of one of those projects personally for me that I don't feel like it has to be perfect. A little offset would be fine. All right, so I actually prefer to use my sponge. So on my white, I'm just going to sponge a little bit of white on here. Now, for it to be a perfect white circle, it would definitely need a couple of coats. I'm not going for perfect. I am going for just a little bit different, fun, vintage. And just doing my thing and enjoying what I'm doing. I hope you guys are too. All right. This one definitely needs a little bit more love. Okay. So they are just kind of chilling out, hanging out, these little guys. I'm going to go ahead and peel them off. You can do whatever you want to do, but where there we have our wheel. And let's see. A couple more. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna set this to the side. I'm gonna let them dry. The truck is almost dry. We still have to do the windows and the door handles, but we'll get there, we'll get there. No big deal. So in the meantime, I'm going back to these. And I mentioned I have, have my hot glue gun all warmed up and ready to go. So this would be a really good time to grab it. Uh, you will have your twine, which is kind of a really hard, um, stiff, I should say, twine. And I added a, just a tiny titch of glue to the top of the firecracker. And there you have your igniter, not igniter, that'd be the fire part, but that part. And I'm just gonna set it down for a minute to kind of let it cool down and keep on rolling. I know these are a little bit more work and the truck is as well, but I think you're really gonna love it when it's all finished and you get to display it and I think it'll be fun. and there's the third so with these I have one recommendation and that is mod touching over top of the washi tape and the reason why is simply for longevity of them because washi tape is really fun and it's super cute but it is not the stickiest tape in the world so the chances of it lasting on here for years and years and years to come are probably unlikely but we're going to put the mod podge on there so that it becomes very likely um i just use like at this point you can see my my um my pod is like almost gone. It's almost gone. It doesn't even have a lid anymore because I cracked it one day trying to get it open. So be careful when you like hit your paint and your jars 
of glue upside down, like to try to like break it loose a little bit. Sometimes they crack and break and then it's a really big bummer. So, so there we go. We've got that done. And what I'm gonna do is lay it on top of what our washi tape came on in your packaging because it won't stick very much there. I like to rub my finger over top of it just to kind of smooth it out like I do my paint sometimes. But with the washi tape, this is a really bristly brush. It's not one of my favorite brushes, which is why I use it for my Mod Podge. And we have one more to go. You can see my Mod Podge is really thick. And that's because it doesn't really have a lid anymore. It broke about six months ago. But I think you'll be really pleasantly surprised by just rubbing your finger over top of it. and it will just smooth it right out and it won't show as much either. Okay. Next, and then with that Mod Podge, um, the paintbrush, even though that is my Mod Podge paintbrush, I always, always wash it out really, really, really good. And usually hot water breaks it down pretty well, a little bit of um, dish detergent as well. Um, because if not, it'll be as hard as a rock the next time you come back to it. Ooh. All right, so I'm feeling better about this. It's not completely dry. <clears throat> so I think what I'm actually going to do is Put, I'm gonna peel this part off. And I'm going to then use the stencil part on top. Cut this in half. I'm going to put my transfer tape on top of it. It'll just be a little bit easier to do it this way. It'll keep its shape a little bit better. And I'm just lining it on top of what I had from the beginning where I took that off. So the stencil is over top of what I just peeled off. And same with the door handle. It's gonna peel the back of it off, just like you did for that USA sign. Now we have our stencil here, and I'm gonna put this right over top and just line it up to the, the best that I possibly can. Flip to the other side and do the same. So taking the back of it off, the papery part, the non-sticky side, peeled off, have that, and that's gonna go right on top of the other part of the window that I had there that I just peeled off a few moments ago. Okay. Last stencil. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do, um, I really want 
Chinese rice sponge, but we're parched. We'll see if, if our sponge is gonna work. It might be that it's not, because mine's really grungy right now. And I just went outside of the stencil, so I'll show you how to clean that up. Okay. Okay, so I have my paint on here. I went a little bit too far over here. So I'm just actually going to use my nail and just scrape off what I got over there. No big deal came right off. And now I'm taking off my stencil. You do want to make sure that you are absolutely letting all the paint dry before you pull the stencil off because it might pull off some of the paint if you're not using a chalk paint, especially. There you go. Done, done, done. I put this down so it doesn't stick quite as bad. Now we're going to do the other side, same thing. And you're going to notice like this paint is pretty or this uh, wood is pretty dry, really dry actually. So it is just like sucking that paint right on top of it. There it is. Okay, so our check is so almost done, I can't wait to see it. So all the paint is done. The next thing, and the final thing, is putting on the wheels. Like I said earlier, when we first started, this is going to be kind of our um, trial to see how I do with it. If I feel like we've been going back and forth, back and forth on this for a while, as far as if we add all the wheels on there for you guys is that going to be you know do you have a hammer and how is that how hard is it so I'm just going to try and see what I think um I'm thinking that we might need to pre-drill some holes in here first. So, yeah. All right, so that already I can see we're gonna need to pre-drill holes in here. That didn't work. It just broke it in half. Okay, so that answers my question. I am going to basically pause at this point and we will come back to you guys on the wheels in another segment just shortly. I'm going to pre-drill them and see how it goes so that we don't have that. But so far, we do have our America. We have our firecrackers that are still slightly drying and for me, and you'll want to make sure that they are completely dry before you put them in here because they will get stuck to each other. 
Oh, but here is our America. And our truck is there. The only thing it needs is some wheels and we'll be right back with the wheels for sure. So I hope you guys had fun. I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, as always, please reach out. Just let me know. And I'm here and happy to help. So I'll be back in a jiffy.